righty, we're back, and we have a wonderful guest with us. Doug Tellamy from the University of Delaware is an entomologist and a super-duper monarch expert. Rich, I can't wait to learn more. Yeah, I'm particularly excited about, about interviewing Doug because I, as a horticulturist, I'm very, very uh, excited to learn about the relationship between insects and plants, and anytime we can talk to a, a real expert, I, uh, I get pretty excited, so... Hey, Doug, welcome to the show. Thanks very much, Rich. Pleasure to be here. Thank you for, thank you for doing this, and thank you for coming on. And, and, you know, hey, everybody, you know, because of social media nowadays, it seems like even just the casual gardener or the casual average, you know, person is starting to be aware of the plight of the monarch butterfly. And it's kind of uh, been in the news and through social media, and I'm, I'm seeing stuff all over the place now. Um, what's going on with, with the monarch butterfly? Uh, the monarch butterfly is in trouble. It has uh, declined in population size dramatically, particularly in the last 10 years. Mm. Um, there's only 3.6% of the monarchs left today that, that were around uh, in 1976. So, wow. Uh, oh, my goodness. 96.4% decrease. And um, you know, there were a lot of monarchs to start with. They were measured in the billions, so there's still millions left. <clears throat> but it's a tiny proportion of what we started with, which is certainly a very bad sign. How do they know? How, how are we measuring? How do we know that there's only, um, you know, 3% of them left? Uh, good question. Most insects, you, you would not know that. But monarchs, very conveniently, all migrate to the same place in Mexico every winter. Uh -huh. uh, and people go down and count them. So they, they can see the entire migrating uh, population of monarchs in uh, the mountains north of Mexico City, and they have very very good estimates of what the the population size is. Wow! Can you tell us? Can you tell us why it's so important that the monarchs don't become extinct? You know, the monarch butterfly is probably the most iconic insect in the world. Uh, and not long ago, there were huge populations; it was doing well. So, if we have a dramatic decline in monarchs. Uh, there's probably a dramatic decline in many other things at the same time. And we know what the problem is. Uh, we are removing the plant that they use for reproduction, and that is uh, milkweed. They'll use any of the species of milkweeds, but uh, milkweed, of course, is, is considered a pest in agricultural fields. And we have uh, now we have products, Roundup Ready corn and soybean, where we can spray Roundup right over the crops, and it kills all the weeds. Uh, so that's fair enough. We don't want the weeds in the middle of the, the crops. But um, very often, uh, we spray outside of the fields as well. So now areas on the edge of the fields that used to hold a lot of, quote, weeds, things like milkweeds, uh, are now essentially bare ground. Uh, so that affects the monarch, but it also affects so many of our native bees mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that need, need flowering plants throughout the summer. Uh, so the monarch is a convenient way of, of seeing that when you do this over tens of thousands of square miles, um, you're taking a tremendous hit on biodiversity. What can, what can the average person do to help save the monarch butterfly? Um, the average homeowner can play a huge role in the future of the monarch. There are things we can change in agriculture. Uh, but we can change what we do with our landscapes, at, at, you know, right in, at home in our neighborhoods right away. We don't need anybody's permission to do that. Uh, and in terms of the monarch, it's very simple. We need to get the milkweeds back um, so that they can reproduce. And then we also need to have fall flowering plants so that when they're migrating in the fall, they have, they have forage. They need uh, nectar as they're moving south. To, to, that's the fuel that they use to migrate. What type of fall flowering plants do you recommend? Um, I recommend fall asters. The, the mm. asters that bloom well into the fall are perfect for monarchs. Goldenrod is also uh, heavily used. All right. All right, Doug. Well, thank you so much. This was an excellent, very informative. Once again, I know I, I've learned a lot and uh, very excited to share this message with the viewers and listeners, and we appreciate you taking the time. I appreciate Absolutely. the opportunity. Thanks, Rick. Thanks so much for being on the show, Doug. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. The New American Lawn Plan from Jonathan Green. Superior grass genetics, superior soil biology. If the house, the dog, and the kids are important to you, then the yard that they and their friends play in should be important too. 
That's why many families have decided to go the more responsible, new American lawn root. It provides organic nourishment for the soil, not just the grass. In turn, the soil provides the optimal environment for a natural, thick, healthy, new American lawn. The New American Lawn Plan improves the biology of the soil, treating the cause, not the symptoms. Early in the spring, you'll want to spread Jonathan Green, Love Your Lawn, Love Your Soil, and Magical. This organic duo will make your soil more alive and porous, providing grassroots with the air and water they need to be able to grow deep and strong. If you need to seed your lawn, spread genetically superior seed such as Jonathan Green Black Beauty Grass Seed. Contrary to traditional thinking, you don't have to spread crabgrass control yet. The newer technology of Jonathan Green's Crabgrass Preventer is even more effective when it's spread later in the spring. This delay allows your grass seedlings to get a good head start. The new American Lawn Plan will give your lawn longer lasting and more positive results than ever. That's because traditional lawn care that treats the symptoms, such as weeds and insects, also depletes the soil of what the lawn really needs. When you work smart, you let nature do the hard work. And you'll get the new American Lawn.